All right, so we're going to continue with the ellipses, uh, but this time we'll be graphing the equation, or graphing the ellipse from the given equation. And so notice here that we have an equation that's in standard form, and we know that it's in standard form because it's set equal to 1, and we can see the horizontal and vertical distances down here in these denominators. The first thing that we'll need to do is find the center of our ellipse and be really careful. Remember, the H is inside of the parentheses with the X. So the X coordinate of our center is positive 1. The K is the value that's inside the parentheses with the Y, and that's going to be a negative 2. You use the opposite signs of H and K. And we'll go ahead and plot that center first at 1, negative 2. And then remember we want to find that horizontal distance. So the horizontal distance is always the number that's underneath the x squared term. In this case, we're going to take the square root of 36, and our horizontal distance is going to be 6 units. So we're going to come out 6 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, we're a little off the grid here, so we'll just make a point there. 6 units to the right, 6 units to the left. And then our vertical distance, remember, is going to be this number that's being squared underneath the y squared term. And we'll square root that, and that's going to give us a vertical distance of 3 units. So we're going to come up 3 units from the center, down 3 units from the center. Remember, these are called covertices because that's giving us a shorter diameter. And these two points that we came out 6 to the right, 6 to the left, are our vertices. And then we're just going to connect all four of those points into a nice, smooth ellipse with a center at 1, negative 2. We have a major axis length all the way across this long diameter of 6 units here on the left, 6 units on the right, so our major axis is 12 units long. Our minor axis, remember, is the smaller diameter all the way across here. And remember, that was 3 units up, 3 units down, so our minor axis has a length of 6 units. All right, so for our second example here where we're going to have to graph the ellipse, we can see that this equation is not in standard form. It's in a modified general form. We know that it's not standard form because the equation is not set equal to 1. We don't see those denominators uh, at all. And uh, what we're going to have to do for this is we are going to have to complete the square to get our equation into standard form. So it will be a process very similar to circles. The first thing we're going to want to do is collect all of the variable terms on one side of the equation. And we want to keep like terms together. So we'll keep that 16x squared and that positive 32x together. And we'll just add the y squared over to the other side of the equation. So our constant in this case is 0. Now, we have an x squared term and an x term, so we will have to complete the square for the x's, but notice that we only have a y squared term and the, the y term, its partner, is uh, not in this equation, so we do not have to complete the square for the y's. The first step in completing the square for the x's is to factor out the number that's in front of the squared term. So we're going to factor out the 16 from both of these two terms here. We have left then x squared plus 2x, and then we'll find the number that's going to go in our box to complete the square. And then we have plus y squared equals 0, and we're going to want to keep our equation balanced. Now remember that because 
we factored out a 16 on the left side that's really being multiplied here by our magic number, we will want to multiply this magic number on the other side by 16 also. So let's go ahead and find the number that's going to complete the square, the number that's going to go in the box. Remember that's found by taking the B, dividing it by 2, and squaring it. RB in this case is that 2 now, so we're going to divide 2 by 2 and square that. We get 1 squared, which is just 1. So our magic number that we're going to add on both sides of our equation is 1. At this point, we want to keep the 16 right where it is, and we want to write this trinomial as the square of a binomial. So that's going to look like x plus 1 quantity squared. We're going to bring down that y squared. And over here on the right side of our equation, when we multiply and combine our like terms, we just get a 16. So we're almost there, but notice that our equation is not set equal to 1 just yet. It's set equal to 16. So to get our equation set equal to 1, we just want to divide by this number on the right side all the way through our equation. Do a little reducing here. So our equation, when we write it in standard form, is x plus 1 squared plus y squared divided by 16 equals 1. What we need to do at this point is find the center and that horizontal distance and that vertical distance so we can do a little bit of graphing. So our center, remember, is the h and k. Our center at the, in this case is negative 1, 0. Hopefully by now you're recognizing that when we just have an x squared or y squared, the value that's being subtracted is 0. The horizontal distance is this number that's in the denominator here. And remember, if we don't see something being divided by anything, it's an understood 1. Our vertical distance, that's, under, that's the number underneath the y squared term. We'll take the square root of that. Our vertical distance is 4. So my ellipse has a center at negative 1, 0 right here. I'm having a little trouble with the pen. Just give me a second here. There's our center. Remember our horizontal distance is this one unit, so we're going to come out one unit to the right, one unit to the left. Vertical distance is 4. 4 up and 4 units down from the center and we're going to connect these into a nice smooth ellipse. And notice that this ellipse has a longer distance in the vertical direction, so we would say this is a vertical ellipse. If that longer distance were horizontal, then we would call our ellipse a horizontal ellipse. All right, continuing on for our third example, we can tell that this is definitely in general form because our equation is set equal to 0. We're going to have to complete the square for the x terms because we have an x squared and an x. And we'll have to complete the square for the y terms because we have the y squared and its partner, the y term. So the first thing we'll want to do is collect all of the like terms together and move the constant over here to the other side. So we'll write things as x squared minus 16x plus 9y squared plus 54y equals negative 61. All right, so the next step, remember, is that we want to factor out the coefficient in front of the x squared and in front of the y squared term from each of those different variables. So we'll factor the 4 out of the x terms, and that will leave us x squared minus 4x, and then we'll find the number to complete the square for the x's. And we'll factor that 9 out of the y squared terms, or the y terms, and that will leave us y squared plus 6y. 
and we'll find the number that will complete the square for the y terms. So remember that we're going to keep our equation balanced by multiplying the number for the x's by 4, and we're also going to balance the y terms by multiplying that value that we're going to add by 9. Okay, so let's go ahead and find those magic numbers now that will complete the square. Remember we're going to use the b value here of negative 4, we'll divide it by 2 and square it, so our magic number for the x's will be 4. We'll add that in on both sides. And uh, we'll also do the same thing for our y terms. We'll use the b value here of 6, divide that by 2, and square that value gives us a 9 that we're going to add for the y terms on both sides. All right, so we have everything now that we need to continue this. We're going to keep the 4 out in the front. We'll write this trinomial as a binomial squared of x minus 2 squared. We've got that 9 that's in front of the y terms, and we'll write the y trinomial here as a binomial of y plus 3 squared. And when we do all of our multiplication and simplify all of our like terms over here, negative 61 plus 16 plus 81, we get an equation that's set equal to 36. Now remember that our ellipse equation should always be equal to 1. So to get our equation equal to 1, we're just going to divide everything in our equation, all of our terms, by that 36. And we're going to do a little bit of reducing here. We should never have these coefficients in the numerator in our final equation. Our final equation, simplified, is x minus 2 squared divided by 9 plus y plus 3 squared divided by 4 equals 1. So now that we have the equation written in standard form, I'm going to let you guys figure out how to graph this ellipse from this equation, and I would also like you to find the lengths of the major and minor axes. All right, so hopefully uh, you graphed a picture very similar to what I have here with a center at 2, negative 3, a horizontal distance from the center to the ellipse of 3 units, a vertical distance from the center uh, to the ellipse of 2 units. That makes the major axis 6 units long. Remember, major axis is the longer diameter from endpoint to endpoint and the minor axis is four units. Great job.